BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down, all in his prophecies, what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective. For without the roots, the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnants Call. Welcome to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show. We're prophecy, politics, religion, the straight truth, the sledgehammer show come to you right from whatever device you're listening to us from or watching us from. Let me introduce myself. I am Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyne Messianic Congregation, where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua the Messiah as one people, the only true religion, Torah observant Messianic Judaism, which is 100% legalistic for the father would never give us anything bad or change his mind and this is going to be a show that we're going to really put this forth and the name of tonight's show or the today show whenever you're watching is show number sledgehammer show number 267 the politics of religion we are not under the law or are we we're going to talk about that today, and we're going to talk about some and why the problems of the world are really happening. But let me first introduce some of my uh, guest panel here, as you've seen them before, none other than Rav Will McCubbins of the great state of North Carolina. He's carrying, he's carrying one, two, he's carrying three, four, he's carrying all sorts of different things. And I forgot to mute the phone, and we're going to do that, and we're going to mute the phone. We're going to stop that right there. And when joined on the line by a man with a face for radio, the man who does the Sendados and Tigles radio show, none other than Rav Eduardo Mangeris, the man who is doing the road to Emmaus, to Helim class, the Psalms. All right, let's get down to our topic for this part of the show. Okay, now there's a movement going around again. And um, every time, you know, you got to ask yourself these questions. Okay. Is the Hebrew Roots faith dangerous? Is the Messianic Jewish movement dangerous? Is the Gentile Christian Church demonic? Law of grace. We're going to look into all these questions tonight. But first, we're going to start with this. We're going to start with Scripture. Because this is what you need to know. Because um, really the problems of the world and I've been talking to my wife about it, we talk about politics, we talk about, you know, what's going on in the government, you know, the, the Democrats and the Republicans, the, the, the scummy Crats and the scummy Republicans, you know, and how did it get really this bad? That both parties really do stink. Um, it comes down to really the body of Messiah. Okay? The body of Messiah does not represent Yeshua anymore. And you can tell that from Matthew 5, verse 8, Matthew 5, verse 18. Yes, indeed, I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not so much as a yod, that's a dot of an eye, or a stroke will pass from the Torah, cross of a T, not until everything that must happen has happened. I mean, the church and the messianic body should fully understand this. The Yeshua, our Messiah, said not until heaven and earth pass away, not so much as a yod, a little part of the Torah is missing. And now, really, we could cut the show right out, right there, and be be going home and having you know whatever, having a nice cold uh, birch beer, or uh, a sweet tea, or cheer wine, or something like that. All right, but we got a lot of stupid people out there, and a lot of men that are demonically possessed, and a lot of women preachers that are demonically possessed, and a lot of people that don't know their butt from their elbow. I mean, it's very simple, until heaven and earth pass away. I don't understand why this is so difficult to understand, but, you know, it is for most people because they, they can't even read a full sentence without falling asleep. Okay, so now, you know, we're, gonna, we're setting this up because is the Hebrew Roots movement dangerous? Okay, Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, both great and small, standing in front of the throne. Books were opened. And another book was opened, 
the book of life. And the dead were judged by from what was written in the books according to what they had done. Now, most uh, lame Christians, and the person like the, the guy we're going to talk about in a moment, and the letter that he posted, okay, uh, don't understand that the book of Revelation, okay, when the book of Revelation was written, the New Testament, the Brit Shah, was not written, okay? So here, you know, I saw the dead, both great and small. It doesn't see, I see the Jews, or the Christians, or the church. He said, I saw the dead, okay? That means everybody is dead, standing in front of the throne. Books were open, and another book was open, the book of life. So we all know from, you know, the book of, uh, in the Torah, that Mo Moshe talks about the book of life. Okay, so with, with the, these other books are opened, and that is the Torah, okay? Because what was read in every synagogue, uh, you know, in the book of Acts, you know, Paul and Barna, Barnabas are out of town, and, you know, they, they go to Shabbat, and they hear the Torah, and the town people say, well, when can we hear this again? And Paul says, well, tomorrow, it's Sunday, you know, it's church day. No, it goes next Shabbat, okay? Because what, what did they hear for the very first time? They heard the Torah, okay? Now, why are we talking about this for this particular show? Okay? There's this idiot, this moron, this guy who's this dumb Gentile who thinks he's a, a revival preacher. Okay, why do we need revival? Okay, let's just take a part of your, your ministry here. Andrew Strom, moron from New Zealand. Okay? Revival. Well, why do we need revival if we're under grace? If we don't have to follow the law, why do we need revival? Okay, he's from New Zealand. He's the founder of RevivalSchool.com. Go to his crappy site, and if you want, I mean, you know, if you think that the guy's good, then follow him. The guy's a moron, okay, because he doesn't know his butt from his elbow. Okay, he doesn't know what uh, true or false revival is. Um, his ministry emphasis on repentance. Well, why do we got to repent there, Andy, um, if... Uh, uh, we're under grace. What do we got to repent from? And, uh, you know, all I got to do is believe in Jesus, you know, Jesus, Jesus, okay? You know, you're rep so you're saying we don't have to follow the law, but we got to repent. Okay, so I repent from adultery, and, and then I could go to it again because I repented. And I just got to say I'm sorry to my wife, and my wife's just going to keep forgiving me. I guess you don't know uh, women too much. Well, I guess you, you know one part about women. you got six kids, okay? So there's one thing you know, and uh, that you're doing one part that's correct, I guess. Okay? So uh, he pre preaches re repentance. Now let's take a look at Andy Strom, okay? What is he missing? Uh, he's missing a watch. Okay, no. Um, he's missing one of these, a beard. Okay, then you look at the side of him. He doesn't have uh, any seat seat. So by these two pictures, you can tell the person knows uh, he's in defiance of Jehovah's laws. Okay? Now, why are we talking about this? Oh, we're talking about this guy's crappy ministry. Now, I'm going to go a little further, and I'm going to bring Rav Ed and Rav Will, Will on. Andrew Strom posts, testimony of a woman who is deeply involved. I wanted to share with you why I feel that the Hebrew Roots movement and the Sacred Names movement is just dangerous to the latter rain doctrine. Coming out of both, I feel confident in saying so. I grew up in the Assembly of God Church. Well, <laughs> so you know nothing about the Lord. And and uh, some of the church, one that did not teach latter rain, dominion poison. Okay, then this person goes on that Strom Post. There's a very real danger of legalism. To me, the entire thrust of the movement ends up going right against the New Testament. In fact, right against true Christianity. I think it can become very dangerous. The bondage of the law again. Bondage? I thought Yeshua said, Revel, um, not until heaven and earth pass away. Uh, I know you have got to get some cheer wine to be able to talk about this. What do you think about this, this idiot Strom, you know, throwing this crap out again? And, you know, I mean, you know, we're doing such a great job in the world. That's why Christians are getting killed all around the globe. Because, you know, you're so godlike. You know, God want, wants you dead so that he can bring you back to heaven. Die a horrible death. You know, 100 Christians in Africa this, this week were burned to death 
by you know peace loving Muslims who are you know they can't, the, the Muslims make the the Christians look like the brilliant, okay, uh, but yet the Christians are getting slaughtered around the globe. I thought, you know, if we we follow God, uh, nothing's going to happen to us. You know, Israel's surrounded by a billion billion Muslims, yet God is protecting them. So, what do you think about the, these uh, the, these two parts here with the the woman saying? Uh, legalism and the Hebrew roots movement is dangerous. What do you think about that, Rev? Will? Well, I don't know who she was involved in. Uh, she was probably involved in one of those wacky IAMCS congregations or one of those MJAA congregations. So she's right about one thing. They're just as bad as the church. But, but this... Uh, Strom guy saying legalism and it goes right against true Christianity. I wonder how he would react to hear me say I'm I'm quite comfortable being against Christianity because you know the Christianity they don't do the the Lord's holy days they don't do the Lord's Sabbath they do nothing Yeshua did they claim we believe in Jesus, and even if they got his name right, even if they even if they really knew who he was, we believe in Yeshua the Messiah. Well, your main man Paul said, "Good for you." So do the demons. So, uh, so I, I think it's a good place to be to be against Christianity and against true Christianity. That's fine. But I don't know who, I don't know who he's referring to because his supposed letter from the lady is very, very vague. She's, it's a rough generalization of an entire movement. She would, you know, they wouldn't say what messianic movement, what messianic ministry they were involved with. I mean. If somebody is that bad and somebody is dangerous and you're a man of God, it's incumbent upon you to say who that person is and what specifically they're doing. If you can't do that, you're nothing but a gossip. You're, you know, it's Lashon Hara. So put forth your evidence or just shut up. But the, the key is here and why we're talking about it for this particular show. I mean, there's so much that we could be talking about. But like I said, you know, you know, I talk with my wife a lot. A lot. I know that's strange. You know, a husband would talk with his wife. Um, you know, we talk about politics. We talk about, you know, Infowars. We talk about Rush Limbaugh. We talk about, you know, Beck and, you know, all, all these people. And, and what's going on in the country? And the country is dissolving, you know, when a, when a town, you know, in Minnesota... Uh, stops doing the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? I mean, we could talk about all this, but the real issue is here, I believe. It, it stems from here, because the Constitution is only written for a moral and religious people, okay? So, you know, with this, you know, Strom posting that this part of this letter that says it is a very real danger of legalism, Rav Ed, and it, and it goes on to say here, Rav Ed, what true Christianity? Maybe you can explain to me, without sweating too much. Um, what is true Christianity? I mean, Christianity. And aren't you supposed to be Christ-like? And didn't Yeshua say in Matthew five verse eighteen, "Not one jot or tittle will be lost from the law until heaven and earth pass away"? Are we on the planet Zoltar or something that I I missed? We're still in the same planet and the same earth. <laughs> Sorry, Rob, I have to tell you that. <laughs> so nothing has changed. Everything is the same. Everything is the same. Uh, we, can't, we, we have to keep doing everything what, what the Lord commands us. But you're right. Uh, the true Christianity should be be like like Christ. Let's, let's use Christ. It should be, be like Him. But none of them are, are acting like him. None of them are basically teaching like him. Well, we know that the only Rabbi is the Yeshua. He's the only one who's uh, who who's the the rabbis of the rabbis, you know. But in this case, people get 
so much uh, misled for uh, false doctrines that it is exists outside. And uh, basically, once when they start to go from place to place without have his foundation, which would be the Torah, uh, they start to get lost right away because they're looking for something else. That's that's the problem that so far so far until this point I I start to to see the 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 picture uh, why people are going there is because people don't educate themselves uh, people don't go home and double check in their own Bibles because if he's teaching something you know they they should go home and say let me see if everything is right because I don't want to fail to my Messiah. Uh, starting from that point, uh, is I see the the big problem. Uh, but you're right; there is so many branches of Christianity that you don't even know where to go. At at this point, we know that that they run, but besides they run, they're confusing people because they know simple thing: the fourth commandment. They know about that, and they close the book right away or they jump and they say no that is in the all so what well, they don't even they cannot you know give God the right uh ownership because he's the one who give us that law for us to to get better because he know he knew we we're going to 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 fail and that's why he says he is there is the instructions that I give you to you just follow and but we can see they're stiff neck. <laughs> so stiff, they 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 don't they don't want to see the the truth. They don't want to see the truth, and they want their comfort, their comfortness, and they want to live a good life, basically, uh, because they, uh, you can see what he's dressing all that, the type of word where they preach. He's he don't need anything, you know. I, I guess that's why. It's the fear for them to involve people in the false doctrine. Involve people in their false doctrine. Now, um, let's um, let's take a look at that a little bit. Now, Rabbi used to be like a pastor guy at a church. When you were thinking about leaving, or you know, you know, the Lord was moving on your heart. Did you have anybody? come to you and say you're going against the New Testament, you're going against Christianity? Did, you know, did people say this to you? I mean, you know, this, you're, 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 go, you're going to the bondage of the law. I mean, did, did you ever hear this from people that, you know, you knew from the church that you used to go to? Yes, we heard that a lot, but it wasn't necessarily because we had left the church. It's just when when they found out that we were not worshiping on Sunday anymore and that we were not doing those pagan days, you know, Christmas, you know, the the feast of Saturn, basically, and the uh, the Easter, you know, the feast, the feast of Tammuz and Ishtar, basically, we when they found out we were no longer doing those days. Then it became, hey, are you leaving Christianity? Are you against grace? Doing those old holy days is against grace. And I even told one guy, well, look, I don't worship anybody named Grace. So we're only supposed to worship God. I don't know this Grace girl, you know, but I'm not going to worship her. So anyway, yeah, but it's it was more about the things that we were leaving behind that made people say that to us. It was not, it was not necessarily because the, you know, the basic doctrine of, you know, salvation through the Son of God is not the basic thrust is not that different but when you get into some of the details you find that it's very different but i had people in the messianic movement say that you know we were we were gone way too far because you know the 
most of these messianic movement uh, churches are really just like that guy's letter said really about control they're very very much into into control they're not really really doing the holy days uh, not like we do here at Beth Goyim that's for sure but yeah I have heard that definitely Mr. Marty, thank you for arriving and showing up to our parade here. Um, used to be a, a Seventh-day uh, pastor. Um, when you started to get the real call of God and going uh, for the real Christianity, uh, did people say that you you know you were you're getting tied to the bondage of the law? Did you were, did you hear the word legalism? And you know how how did you answer it? I mean this 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 strom piece of garbage is um is uh you know pointing the you know the legalism real you're going against real true christianity what what did you uh um understand shalom everybody well that's a pretty interesting uh, topic that you choose to uh, talk about that we're talking about tonight yeah, it made me, when I was reading a little bit about it, it, it made me thought, you know, in my in my childhood and see my, you know, the group that I used to gather, uh, being, you know, keeping the Sabbath and the Leviticus 11, and we thought we were legalistic because our, our conversation with other groups was exactly this. Uh, we were fighting against the grace because they were, you know, we are under the grace. Therefore, we don't need to keep any uh, of, of laws of the Old Testament. So, you know, this was the battle that we had. Even though we didn't have the whole truth, but that was the main theme that we always fight against the Sunday Keeper Church. Uh, we thought we were legalistic because, you know, quote unquote, keeping the Saturday and try to, you know, but this is not other than, I mean, the doctrine of grace. I mean, that has been, that has been running the show since for many centuries, you know, after Martin Luther King, uh, Martin, Martin Luther, right? Is that right? Uh, when he set up his thing of the Catholic Church. We are the, 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 reforma the Reformation. The Reformation, yeah. And uh, it became a very strong, solid theology that they have. Besides the Catholic Church, you know, they started the whole thing. And, and today, I'm surprised they're kind of complaining about it because when is the church or when is the Christians be under the law? The Gentiles not be under the law. I mean, when? God didn't have no... Uh, covenant with the church but this is an ongoing thing you know going for many 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 years so now that God is calling and and, and, and and our Jewish brothers and God is you know bringing uh, raising up people like yourself Rabbi and the other rabbis and you know teaching the truth the real truth of the Torah of, of God I don't know what, why they feel why they feel the burden. I mean, they just don't want. Let me ask you a question. What what is what is when people said you, you're under the bondage of the law? What what the what the heck does that mean? The bondage of the law. So can I go have anal sex with my brother? Uh, can I go to a a, a go go bar? Can I snort cocaine? You know, can I steal, lie, cheat, covet? You know, can I have uh, a Spanish woman, a black woman, and an uh, and, uh, uh, Anglican woman at the same time to have a menage a trois? You know, what, so what is this bondage? Of, why do people say we're under the bondage of the law? Yeah, the, first of all, they don't understand. You know, they, they, they think that the law is important to their lives, which... It's not. I mean, they they don't behave 
they don't know how to keep the commandments and therefore they, it, it's, a, it's a heavy burden in their lives. Because why well, they don't come to, to know the truth because when they come and know the truth, they will see each other, they will see themselves in the mirror. And they will see the real person in the mirror. They don't want they don't want the truth. Because you know, I think one of the heaviest things that I in my always in my mind crosses is those heavy doctrines that the Christianity put in people's mind. You know, the doctrine of grace, the doctrine of uh, supersession, the doctrine of uh, uh, replacement theology, and the seventh or nine, you know, uh, uh, the other heavy doctrine that they have uh, dispensation, which they all lie. I mean, they're all against God's word. So I don't know what they, I mean, it's pretty interesting that we were, you know, the, this past Shabbat, the, in, in our the study that we are having, you mentioned something very interesting that uh, you mentioned that Yeshua, everybody thinks, oh, Jesus is love. Yeah, it's love. You know, but who's going to open the seal? It's a totally different character. I mean, that's the real Yeshua. You know, he's going to be open the seal. And when it comes up, when he opens the seal, in the book of Revelation, death, war, and hunger, and, and, and you know, uh, it's amazing how, you know, when we really study the, the, the word of God, we'll see the real Yeshua, his love, his also justice. But people don't want to know this Messiah. They just want to have the Jesus love. Everything is love. Everything is about grace. No problem. Nobody's going to judge you. Oh, dude, no problem. Everything's okay. No, it's not. You know, it's not. It's not okay. He's coming with power and glory. And it's amazing. I got to tell you a story. <laughs> I had the opportunity to talk to a, a reformed Jew on Sunday. And believe me, the, the reform Judaism, this is what they think also. They think that God is, it's, it's, uh, it's a graceful. And he told me about this, their, their expectation of the Messiah. They say that the, that the Messiah is going to come and fix everything, but in love. And I told him, I said, listen, he already came. You missed it, brother. He came in love. Now he's coming with power and glory. And he goes, no, no, he's going to fix all the problems. And, and I was, you know, it's no different from the, from the church, really. Oh, that was a short story. <laughs> well, that was a short Martin story. All right, going on to the next no, part. I didn't want to keep going because I already took too long. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here, uh, Strom uh, posts another part. We par participate in the Feast of the Bible, and of course we observe the Sabbath religiously every Saturday. He began to teach that we became, become righteous through the law, and that's why Yeshua came to show us how to keep the law. He actually began to teach that we need to keep as much of the law of Moses that we could, and it was lawlessness not to do so. Some of the laws of the Old Covenant and how we were uncomfortable with some about slavery, for instance. Okay, so now we get into it, okay? The person is uncomfortable, that means they have sin, okay? So we become, now let's go back. He actually began to teach that we need to keep as much of the law of Moses that we we could, and it was lawless not to do so, okay? So how do we answer that? Well, let's go back to our one of our main scriptures here. Yeshua said in Matthew 5.18, uh, 518 here, uh, you, you need to keep as much of the law of Moses as possible, okay? Um, and if you don't, uh, when you get to this part where you're dead and you're going to be judged, you're going to be standing in front of the throne, and that's not Yeshua's throne, that's the Father's throne, uh, the books of the Torah are going to be open, Okay. So, Rav Will, you know, what do you think about this uh, this part where this person is saying uh, 
that we need to keep as much of the law of Moses that we could, and it's lawless not to do so. Do we agree with that? Uh, are we being legalistic? Uh, what do you think? Well, I totally agree with the person on that issue. Uh, I'm, I see that Strom does not. Now, this supposed person who wrote this letter, if they're even real, says that he began to teach that we become righteous through the law. Well, she should have left that congregation a long time before she did if the guy was teaching that you could just make your own way. If she's messianic and she's being taught that you can make your own way, she should have hit the road. Uh, so... But the one thing that I definitely agree with is Yeshua came to show us how to keep the law. Well, if somebody doesn't think that Yeshua came to show us how to keep the law, I will ask this simple question. And this is my, this is my roundhouse kick move on that person. This is my headshot on that person. Yeshua came to show us how to keep the law. Well, if he didn't, tell me what laws he broke. I want to see, read the whole New Testament and show me where Yeshua broke the laws of the Torah. Where is that? Now, let's turn the coin over. I could spend all day going through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John with you and showing you where Yeshua, the Son of God, kept the laws. He kept the feast. He kept the Sabbath. In fact, he said he's Lord of the Sabbath. Well, if he's Lord of the Sabbath, then he's not Lord of Apollo's Sabbath, which is on Sunday, right? He's Lord of the Sabbath. So, there you go. I agree with, I agree with, uh, that what, uh, one of the messianic teachers said about Yeshua and keeping the law of Moses, that sounds completely reasonable to me. Uh, I don't know why anybody would be uncomfortable with the laws of the old covenant unless they're just lawless, unless they just don't want to worship God or don't care to worship God in the way he said to do so. But you can't possibly say you're a follower of Yeshua and with the same mouth say, I'm just not comfortable with those laws in the Bible, or I'm just not comfortable with being told I need to obey those laws. How can you follow Yeshua and then turn around with the same mouth and say, oh, that written word became flesh, and that's Yeshua. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, uh, Rabbi, well, what you said about that. You know, some of the laws in the Old Covenant, how we are uncomfortable. Rabbi, what, what do you think about this part? You know, with the woman, we're, you know, we're seeing this, this in this letter at Strong Posts about this uncomfortableness. What do you think about being uncomfortable and, you know, you know saying, you know, that's legalism? Where... Is it because she doesn't want to do it? She wants to be a bratty child, like most of the church. Oh, we're under grace. Well, you know, it's bad, it's uncomfortable with some laws about slavery. Well, didn't God give us rules for slavery? So you're telling the creator of the universe that he's wrong? What do you think there, Rabbi Ed? Especially in the bottom part is what it says in there, um, uncomfortable with uh, some about slavery. But once again, they don't understand about those terms, slavery. They don't understand about simple things that if, if they search. You know, there is one thing, um, when they try to look for the Hebrew roots, they should have the passage that we start the 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 show, Matthew five eighteen. They should keep keep that one in their mind. With that, they clarify themselves that God 
is not going to lie that Jehovah, Hashem, whatever they want to call them, they have to give them. They have to because he cannot contradict Yeshua, Yeshua he cannot contradict the other. So, therefore, those understanding the uncomfortable and the slavery, they don't understand. That is the main here. There is a, uh, and I just see the morning also that supporting these type of teachings. And also, women are teaching that they can make up, they can wear earrings, and all that. They they misunderstood because, uh, well, when they live in Egypt, they said, "Give me your earrings, your your, your and all that, your jewelry." So that means they 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 had that, but they don't understand why they had that, you know. So also, the Lord said, "It's bad. They don't they don't have to use it." Also, that is slavery, and besides that. What is that slavery? Slavery to the Torah. They understand that we belong to God. Our job in here is just to worship Him, to be a, a example for the for the community, for, to be an example for the for the rest of the people. Like these people, they all, and Yeshua talk about these people. They said they go, they're going to be against you. They're gonna persecute you. Once when you start to show the what is right, they gonna go against you. So we know that because of we tell them the truth, because of we bring this truth to to the public, they gonna hate us because they don't, they they want to keep rejoicing in their sin. They they are so arrogant that they cannot be humble. And said, "Let me let me double check. Maybe I am wrong. Just with that, maybe it's, it's a big step. But they they have everything in the scripture. If they want to search the Hebrew roots, they should they they should read the Hebrew roots. You know, like go deep. But having that in mind, that nothing is changed. We're still living in the same heaven and the same Hashemai and the same Haaretz. You know, nothing changed." Those Hebrew roots, they should understand. Those Hebrew roots, either in the in the simple passage that every Christian know about the Isaiah 53, when they said as he was wounded for our sins, for our iniquity, they should understand what is that little word wounded when they said Messiah didn't come. Martin bring the topic that he talked with with a uh, with a uh, Reformed Jew. They, they should understand either that passage, what is that wounded, that word, when they check in the Hebrew, that means to perforate, so to pierce. So they should understand that somebody came and they have pierced in their hands the Messiah, our Messiah came already. So when they try to look, they have to find it from their own sake and not to look for how they going to feel? I wanna feel good. I've been so misled. Uh, let me go try different church. Okay, I like this pastor. I like this rabbi in these days. Oh, he he talks really eloquent. I like the way he talks. I feel okay. That that is that doesn't take you to heaven. What it take you to heaven? Is somebody to tell you the truth. Somebody to tell you what you doing wrong. You need to change because not for me, not for for your husband, not for your wife, not for your kids. You have to change because of somebody created you. For God, He created you. He gave His only Son, and He died for us. Well, that leads me to my part. What you said, He gave His only Son, and He died for us. You know, when you look at this part, you know, when the person says how they were uncomfortable with some parts about slavery, that leads to John three, Yochanan three, verse twenty-one and twenty, uh, twenty and twenty-one or 20 to 22, where Yeshua goes, you know, the darkness hates the light, okay? You, if you're uncomfortable about slavery, God gives us rules about slavery. If you steal something, you have to replace, you have to give 100% back plus 20%, okay? And if you don't have that 120% to get back, 
you're, you're going to be a slave for up to six full years. You know, you should have thought about stealing before you stole, okay? It's not a mortal sin. Um, you know, we don't stone you to death for stealing. You know, we're adultery, and I think we should stone adulterers to death because you ruin the family. That's how we're, we've gotten to this mess in America and the world. You know, the, the other countries, South America, Central America, you know, Mexico, Brazil, you know, Europe, the family's destroyed. That's why the countries are a mess, okay? Once you destroy the family, and that's why God said stone the adulterers, okay? But for stealing, you know, you got to go in slavery up to six, six full years. So, you know, being uncomfortable with something is meaning that you don't understand it, but you're, you're going against the, the creator of the universe who created you. Okay, the one who said, let there be light, and there was light. And we want to get into what the light is, the, the or is. Okay? Let me go on to the next part here. In Revelation 22.15, outside of the homosexuals, those involved with the occult and with drugs, the sexually immoral, murderers, idol worshippers, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So if you're uh, practicing falsehood, you're uncomfortable with slavery. You're uncomfortable with other parts of the law. You're uncomfortable with keeping the Shabbat holy. You know, let's see what else this person writes. About 10 years of this running after the new revelation, we had a huge box of tapes with personal prophecies. We became really disillusioned with the hypocrisy, lawlessness, and cheap grace attitude. Wait, lawlessness? And now you're saying... We're legalistic, but so what What Chinese menu restaurant did you go to? Or are you going to the Happy Meal department at McDonald's or, or one of the fast food chains? Martin, what, what do you think about this? You know, we became disillusioned with hypocrisy and lawlessness. And Chief Grace, <laughs> what, what, can you explain to me this, you know, you former uh, Gentile uh, pastor? Well, you know, this is, it's just funny because they don't even know. They don't even know what they they saying. Either you keep the law or you're not keeping the law. Come on, make up your mind, you know. So I think I think you know. I I went to Mexico about it was four years ago, right before I started going to the synagogue, and I went to the church and I talked to I was talking to my nephew. He's he's a pastor over there, and. We start talking, you know, about the, the Hebrew roots. Uh, you know, I wasn't with Beth going yet, uh, having the real teaching. And, you know, him keeping the Sabbath, and me keeping the Sabbath, and I go, I went up a little, one, a, a little step up, you know, from them, a little higher level, if I could say that. And what I... And what I noticed of his, you know, because we were going, going back and forth with the, with the word, that they, this church, that they created a a wall or rather a, a uh, how do I explain it? Um, they created a theology to fight over what is happening with the Hebrew roots or or the messianic belief. What I noticed is that they were prepared, they prepared a document with like talking to another group, like when I used to be in the church, because when I used to be in the church, they used to prepare us how to go and talk to a Jehovah Witness or how to talk to a, a Pentecostal, different groups, how to answer, how to say, you know, the ins and outs. And that's what I find out what they, they, they prepare. They prepare something so in other words, they would treat they, they treat the messianism with like another church, because I I I could notice that they were the way they were laying out all the you know the uh, the answers and everything to the points that we were establishing, and that made me think. I said, okay, so this is what basically they do, and they believe the church in general. They believe that the messianism is just another church. When I got out of the, out of the synagogue, when I was for 13 years, 
I kind of understand that uh, point because, be honest, I have to be honest with myself that I wasn't getting the right teaching over there. So it was kind of double standard. And also, almost, I almost think that these people, you know, start going to, we don't know what kind of synagogue the Messianism movement they start going to. And, I mean, if we really want to keep the law of God, you need to be a real 100% legalistic. Everything. We have to put, you know, like you've been teaching, or we, we know now that we have to put Matthew 5.18 in context of the whole Bible. Otherwise, it will not match. And that's one of the biggest problems that we have. And I say we because... We have to deal with the other messianics that they don't have this. So they kind of, you know, teaching part of the law, but not the whole law. So it makes these kind of people confused. Because either we keep the law or we don't keep anything. Or we just, you know, what kind of category we will fall in. So I think this is, it's a problem. But we also, we have to recognize that we all, have the Bible. We all have the book. All we need to do is be honest with ourselves, check the law, check the Bible, and we just have to go by that. So then, you know, the church, I mean, the church, I don't know if you guys, probably you probably know this thing. The church keeps over a thousand commandments already that they, you know, develop in the church. The Christianity. Why are they complaining about the 613 commandments of God? And this is right here in the Bible. They already keep over a thousand commandments. What's the deal? It's it's just you know they just brag. I mean, this stubbornness. They, they don't want to really become a real believer. And and that's that's that. I think that's one of the biggest problems. It's a it's a it's a hypocrisy, really. Either you keep the law, or you don't keep anything, and that's it. What? What, you what was your What was your feeling? You know, explain this. You know, because maybe this will give us some insight to the loss that's going on out there in this this Strom uh, demonic teacher. I mean, you went from Seventh Day, uh, uh, what's his face, uh, Armstrong, to Messianic. Uh, the Gentiles didn't have to follow the law, to Torah observant Messianic congregation of Beth Goyim. Explain to me your what was going on in your, your mind and your heart, and then Rabbi, well, you can do the same thing, and then Rabbi Ed went from being a Catholic to a Baptist to smoking cigarettes to <laughs> Beth Goyim. You know, being born and raised in the Church of God seven day with these guys, uh, strong, came out of it, which is, you know, the same teaching. Uh, from childhood, childhood, always hearing the prophecies of Israel, the restoration of Israel, the returning of Israel to the land, and all the other prophecies that God will fulfill in his people. And, uh, you know, hearing all this, Theology and teaching, you know, over your childhood and as you grow and hear the pastors or the ministers preaching about it. And all of a sudden in the 90s, when, when I, you know, in my, probably around 88, 89, 1990, we start seeing the moving coming along, you know, the Jewish people come back and then you start hearing. Because you hear everything. You see, you know, when you're in the in God's business, you you in search of everything, and then, you know, we start seeing that they're coming back. And then, Wait a minute, what's going on? Prophecy is fulfilling. What else? So then I got, you know, I was becoming more interested about it. And this guy from, um, he's probably a guy in his 70s, a uh, minister from the church. He came over and visited us, and I was, you know, talking to him. And... He was the one who gave me the uh, the subscription for for the Messianic Times, and before he left, he gave me uh, David Stern, the um, uh, 
the dictionary, not the dictionary, the uh, commentary, the New Testament commentary, you know. Now, was anything going on in your life? Like, were you certain life was good, life was bad, life was bad? No, I mean, I mean, you know, so so. I mean, you know, not really trouble making and everything like that, but you know, um, we have a lot of questions. I started having a lot of questions about it. I said, wait a minute. And then, and this is what really struck me, and and <laughs> God is good because you've been preaching a lot of this this lately, Matthew 5.17. And one day I was talking to this guy. He says, you know what? And, you know, he referred to the Lord as Jesus. He says, Jesus, Jesus, he didn't do anything away in the cross. He says, Matthew 5.18. He came, you know, everything is right there. That really struck me. This was back in 1990. And then I started searching. And I started searching. That's how I end up in that synagogue because I noticed the structure of the church start falling down. Something happened. I don't know, maybe Rob will, uh, may, he might notice that also, but I noticed that the structure of the church in general start falling apart. Something happened in the 90s in the church, I mean general. Um, the gospel and everything started like falling down. People were starting not to take things seriously. And, you know, more things happened. And I started noticing that. And, and even on the church that I used to go, people didn't keep the, 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 Shabbat, the Sabbath or the seventh day or the Shabbat. Like when I was a child, I remember my father was very jealous about it. Uh, when it comes Friday night, no TV, no radio, nothing. No cook, nothing on Friday night. Um, and I started noticed that people start taking things lightly and, you know, come and go. And then I say, you know, something is going on. That's when I, the, the, the rule of the spirit, you know, start pushing me out. And then we have a big problem in the church. And then that's when I uh, leave my, uh, I left my, my, my place. Another guy took it over. And I found that synagogue over there. And when I was in that synagogue, when I saw when they brought the Torah, the Torah out of the ark, and I saw all the things that I heard when I was a kid, I got in love and I said, wow, this is my house. This is what I wanted. But along the time, when you know, you start seeing things that you go, wait a minute, that doesn't match. Matthew 5, 18. <laughs> Even with our own brothers, Matthew 5, 18. And then I heard the rabbi say, you don't have to keep the Shabbat because you're a Gentile. This is a covenant that God made between, uh, with Israel. Uh, and Shemot 31, I think it is, or 2023, where it says, this is a covenant between my people. It's, you don't have to worry about it. And then I go, wait a minute. So that mean, you mean that my father and my brother and all my people, they didn't, they're going to go to help. What, what happened? So, no, no. You're Gentiles. You don't need circumcision. You don't need anything. You don't even have to wear the talit. That's not for you. That's where everything I go, no, no, wait a minute. This is not right. So, I think we almost go through the same problem that this person had. Now they're realizing, that, wait a minute. This is, you know, something's going on. And because of that, this is very dangerous because because of this, because of this, a lot of people will think, oh, wait a minute, you know, this this is a, 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 a how do you call it, a, a cult. A cult. It's a cult. In no, cult. <laughs> right? So, it is pretty interesting to talk about these things. But all I can say is, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he don't change. Um, either we keep the law or we don't. And that's that's simple. And just like that, you know. Rev Will, um, in your journey, did you know, did you find I mean, was something anything bad going on or something like that where you, you started to search more? I mean you went from being a headbanger and death metal to uh, to uh to church guy to to you know 
pastor sort of teacher to messianic to now the to having an altar in your your yard <laughs> no i was i was the guy that i was the guy that the lord talks about when he said uh if one of you was scattered to the far end of the sky, I'll go there and get you myself. I was that guy. Nobody, nobody ever really evangelized me. I just, I think the Lord knew that I was just far too hardened, and nobody could except Him. But yeah, we went through a lot of this. I became, you know, I became disillusioned with a lot of these things. Hypocrisy, lawlessness, and man, you think you know cheap grace. We were at this place called Salisbury Christian Fellowship for uh, four or five years. And man, you talk about cheap grace rolling on the floor and, you know, screaming in service and this kind of stuff is... It was bad. It was really bad. But back to this Strom guy and his supposed letter writer. Again, if hypocrisy and lawlessness and cheap grace are what they're having a problem with, then what is the alternative to lawlessness and cheap grace? If if Strom repeat, uh, preaches repentance, 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 well, what does repentance mean? Teshuva. That doesn't mean be sorry. That means turn and go the other way. Well, if you're turning and going the other way, what are you going to? I mean, is it just, you know, mostly what we learn in the church was how to be polite and quiet and not offensive. And that's not what the Word of God is about. Yeshua called people snakes. He called people morons. He didn't, he was not quiet and not offensive. He said very many things that were uh, incredibly offensive to all kinds of people. So, so I would I would ask these folks, repent from what? Turn from what? Turn to where? Where do you go? You go to your feelings. You're just going to write another letter five years from now saying, man, I'm so disappointed. Uh, she'll probably write another letter three years from now saying, Andrew Strom was such a, such a terrible person. I, I'm, I was so disillusioned when I left there. So, again, this sounds like, to me, just someone who may be seeking the truth, or they may just be seeking something that feels really good. Because it seemed like they got a little bit of the truth, and it doesn't seem like they were uncomfortable at all with hypocrisy. It seemed like they were really uncomfortable with what little bits of the truth they received. And that and while their teachers were flawed people and they were part of a very flawed movement, and boy so was I. Bait Chauffeur Oat was a terrible place. That was you've heard me say many times, that was my desert. That that was my walk in the in the in the howling wilderness but it's easy to point out what flaws are in the movement but they again they didn't say they were not comfortable with the uncomfortable with those flawed false doctrine movements she never once said i was uncomfortable with them just pretending to keep part of the shabbat she didn't say that at all she didn't say, I was uncomfortable with them keeping the holy days, maybe on the wrong day, just looking at a paper calendar. So the things I was uncomfortable with about the Messianic movement and the Christian movement and all of this other stuff 
are far cry different from what this lady's complaints are. Uh, she's complaining, supposedly, about, you know, one all-powerful authority who sits on his throne in heaven mandating from on high that there are a set of rules to obey. They would rather obey man-made rules. And I thought it was awesome what Martine brought up. The church has a thousand little doctrinal rules. Well, that's 400 more than God. And they don't have any seem to have any problem obeying that. So, I guess, you know, the word of God is proven true again. Yeshua said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Because, hey, I've got 400 less rules than the church. Rav Ed, your last two shekels. That's true. <laughs> 400 less rules. But one thing that called my attention, um, no matter what they, what they teach, if they are against... Um, God's ways, God's Torah, I would say because we follow Torah, they 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 use the loneliness. And when we see that part, when they when they teach wrong that the loneliness, either in the New Testament, anomia is a is against against the, the Mosaic law. Against God, the way that God put everything. If they don't follow follow one thing, I know they try, but they're not doing what is right. They not follow, especially the preacher. If if he's not representing God, as you said, as we said, beer sits is keeping the Shabbat just run from that place. You know, that is a simple clue for everyone. Just if you see like that, like, come on. It's, I found that disrespectful way to to be and to God, you know. He says you have to look different. You have to look different. And how you look different, just follow using God's garments and that. Especially being, you being a preacher. You have to understand that if you teach wrong, everything is going to fall on your shoulders. The blood of all the people that you misguide, the Lord is going to ask the preacher accountable for all those people. I say, why did you do that? What did you do that? You have my rules. You have my book. And you didn't teach what is right. You didn't teach what is right. Is the Hebrew roots faith dangerous? Yeah. If they don't teach the full truth of the 613 laws, and the, the salvation of Yeshua. Is the Messianic Jewish movement dangerous? Yeah! If they don't teach all the laws. It's all the, either all or nothing. If they're keeping the Shabbat, and they don't cite the Rosh Chodesh, then they're dangerous. Is the Gentile Christian church demonic? Yeah! They're demonic because they made up their own rules. They're not Messiah-like at all. Law or grace? I'll answer that with one scripture. Yeshua said, yes, indeed, I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not so much as a yod or a stroke will pass from the Torah, not until everything that must happen has happened. This is what your standard principle is. You don't move off this. Yeshua said this. He agreed with the Father. He doesn't say it's say this here and then at the cross with his last breath say it, it's over with. That would make him a hypocrite with his last breath. And if he's a hypocrite, I'm not following him. He's not a hypocrite because he said his race is done. Okay, he finished his job as the Mashiach, as Messiah. He's not putting away the law because then this scripture would be wrong. And if you think anything Rav Shaul, Paul the Emissary, is writing contradicts this, always come back to this. Okay? That's the problem. Okay? When you look at your sin in the mirror, that's what scares you. And that's why you don't like the laws, because you got to change, because you're sinful. Okay? We're born in sin. 
We're born in a sinful world. The world is all garbage at the moment. But if you do not, if you hold on to this seat, seat, you know, as a woman, the issue of blood held on to Yeshua. She grabbed hold of the law, and the law healed her. It wasn't Yeshua. She grabbed hold of the end of its garment, the kanaf, okay, the wing, and then the wing uh, is that's where you put the sitio, okay. That's where you put the law. And Yeshua said, "Yes, indeed, I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away." So if anybody's following Andrew Strom, run from his place. The only thing he's good for right now is making babies. He's got six kids. I guess he's all right with that. I'd have to ask his wife if he's, uh, you know, but we won't go there with this, okay? He's teaching wrong, okay? Line up with this scripture. Everything you do has to line up with this and this. You're going to be judged on the books. The New Testament is not written yet, so you can't line up with the New Testament. Not that it's not the word, the Gospels are not, it's about Yeshua, our Messiah. We need Messiah. He's our Kohen Hagadol. He's the high priest. He's our intercessor, okay, between us and the Father. You have to, nobody gets into heaven except through Yeshua, okay? You need his atoning blood for the Yom Kippur offering. But if you don't like slavery, well, you're disagreeing with God. If you don't like the Sabbath, you're disagreeing with the Father. And Yeshua said, I go to make a place at my Father's house okay don't get mixed up in this garbage okay if your pastor your rabbi is not teaching the full 613 question him okay with this scripture this one right here question him if you're going to a woman pastor run from the church don't even go there anymore because it was aaron and his sons okay stand on this scripture do not move from it Okay, somebody tries to tell you that in Colossians, Galatians, do not move from the scripture. Well, you've been listening to the Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. I bid you a shalom alechem. Until next time we meet again, Matthew 518, Standard Principle. Shalom, chickens! Shalom, this is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, It's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. 
that Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, Many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.